Right, so it's that time of the year when everybody on YouTube or just everybody does their albums of the year lists. Um, so I'm going to do mine and do a sort of top 10. I was going to do a longer list, but it's going to make the video very long and harder to edit, I think. Um, or take me longer to edit it, and I'm a beginner at a beginner level with video editing, I think. Um, as will be evidenced by this one, which I'm just doing through the webcam, webcam pretty much. Um, so I do think that it's actually been um, perhaps somewhat surprisingly an amazing year for music. Um, again, you know, my uh, my tastes are always on the alternative side of the musical spectrum. I don't listen to much in the mainstream. Not necessarily because all mainstream music is bad, but um, it tends to be the kind of music that I can get bored with quite quickly. Um, so I always tend to be looking out for music from genres like metal, um, alternative rock and alternative pop. Uh, and this list of albums, I think the top 10 are still predominantly on the heavy side of the musical spectrum, but there's some really, really good, strong albums out this year. And I would give a few perhaps honourable mentions at the end of some albums which I think deserve a mention that aren't in my top 10 as well. Um, so uh, without further ado, at, uh, and just to say as well, I think it's good to do, although everybody does these lists and, you know, probably most people don't really care about your album of the year lists, but it's still fun to do it. Um, I think it's good to support musicians or bands that maybe need some referencing or, you know, need support, and particularly in the difficult times of the pandemic. And even if you're just sort of listing your favourite albums on social media to your, just your friends, I think it does something good for word of mouth and for the bands. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's get on with things before I make the video too long and it takes ages to upload or ages to edit. Uh, number 10, my choice at number 10 is Catatonia with City Burials. Um, probably predictable for me that I've got Catatonia on my list because I love their, pretty much their entire discography. I mean, uh, I guess a lot of a lot of people love their early stuff, but for me, I love their stuff from a fever emptiness onwards. Um, that is where I really enjoy, and perhaps it's slightly more accessible, Catatonia, that stuff, because it's more of Jonas's clean singing, um, and it's slightly cleaner arrangements with the music with really good, sort of better production as you go further into their disco discography. Um, and I really enjoyed um, Fall of Hearts, which was their last album from a few years ago, and their newest album, City Burials, I thought was excellent. And it's um, one I've revisited a lot. I think the first half of the album is tremendous and the second half is pretty good as well. It's made it to uh, my number 10 spot on my list for this year. Number nine is Paul Bearer's Forgotten Days. Um, Paul Bearer have a really strong discography. Their last three albums prior to this one were all top notch for me all nines out of tens if not tens out of tens um i loved uh the first album through uh, sorry and extinction wasn't it um i loved foundations of burden particularly loved foundations of burden actually that one was an album of the decade for me it's one i keep going back to i find it so haunting it chimes with me in some way that a lot of other albums don't there's something about it that i find unique in the way um, in fact, Paul Berry generally in the way they craft their music is just slow and beautiful um, and something to behold because it just gets increasingly powerful the further into a song you get. And I think they're just very good musicians. Um, so Forgotten Days is number nine. A couple of great tracks on this album. I personally think my favourites are Riverbed, uh, which is the second one, and uh, Silver Wings, which is the really long, more doomy um, song. Uh, I guess because it's so long. Um, number eight is another Doom album. This seems like this is a running theme this year. Another Doom album, number eight, Atrementus uh, Stygian. And their kind of Doom metal music is called Funeral Doom because it's so slow. Um, it's uh, it's kind of like the opposite in a way of a really fast technical death metal, this kind of music, because it's just it feels totally different from that 
Um, really, this album is super atmospheric. Um, it has kind of feels like it's building up and up to something. And a lot of Funeral Doom can be like that. You don't really feel like you're going anywhere with the music. Whereas this album has an amazing climax at the end of the album, which makes the whole of the rest of the album feel like it, it, it really pays off um, to be patient. And there's some really good clean vocal moments in this as well. Um, I think it's just uh, number eight because it's certainly an album I'm going to be going back to a lot. I think you may be best listening to it in one listen and, and listening to it for the full 45 minutes, I'd say, than just listening to an excerpt because to get the full impact of the album, you do need it. It's like one big storytelling. Um, very dark as well, so be warned. It's a very dark album, is the Atramentus one, but it's superb. Number seven is Xenobiotics More Drape. Now, I mentioned technical death metal. This is this is pretty technical, and it certainly is on the heavy side, on the extreme metal spectrum. Um, I listened to this way back in February, and it has stood the test of time for the rest of 2020. I've gone back to it numerous times. It seems to have really good changes in this album, really good themes. There's there's some nice slow down moments as well that I think work incredibly well with the music um, when it's so furious and fast paced for most of the album. Um, there's a track I particularly like called Light That Burns The Sky, which is uh, it kind of, there's one or two moments in this song where they have sugar like changes in it and it's a weird time signatures. Um, happening but they're so well woven into the song um, it doesn't feel incongruous if you like it's a good words with the rest of the song it's really well done it's a really unusual album in a way of really unusual stuff um, I haven't really heard much like this before I don't think um, yes I've heard death metal and its various uh, subgenres but um, there, there was just something about this album it really stood out really good songwriting i think as well um lots of memorable changes and moments that you'll just want to revisit number six is draconians under a godless fail and this is a really beautiful haunting uh doom metal album another doom metal entry on this list i think what shines for me on this one are the vocals particularly hikers vocals um, her sort of singing is a standout with the beautiful, you know, heavy um, and atmospheric guitar work going on in the background in a lot of this. Um, I think there's a track called The Sethian, which is a slight change of pace for the rest from the rest of the album, but it works incredibly well, such that I actually would say this is maybe my favourite track on the album because it's a little bit different from the rest, and yet it's still very much a draconian track. Um, I also love Sacrificial Flame. I think uh, not only is, does it have every element of the song well executed, but it, it's topped off by this amazing guitar solo right at the very end of the track, which makes it incre an incredibly satisfying track. Um, the whole album is very well themed um, as well, and it's one that um, I will be revisiting probably a number of times in the future. Number five is a band called The Ocean, this progressive metal band with their geological themed Phanerozoic 2. The first album was um, was pretty good as well, the, the other one they did last year I think, or the year before. Um, Phanerozoic 2 really is um, something of a spectacle actually. The second track on the album is the one that I keep listening to. Um, it's 13 minutes long. Uh, but not a minute of that 13 minutes feels a drag at all for me anyway. For some it might because it is a long track. But um, all the changes that happen keep you interested. Uh, there's a great moment when I think it changes slightly after the first four or five minutes of the really kind of almost tool-like and, and heavy part of the song. It changes to a slowed down moment with some a little bit of synth. Uh, and goes all, you know, it sort of adds to the atmosphere of the thing before reverting back again to that really cool chorus this this track has that I really enjoy. Um, beautifully delivered track, 
very well produced, all the elements are there to be appreciated. Um, don't miss this album by the ocean. It's one of the best of 2020 for sure. And it's making it onto a lot of 2020 lists because it is really good. Number four, not an album I've seen on many lists by contrast, Cytotoxin and Nuclear Earth is an album which is super fast, super heavy, super bludgeoning, uh, in your face, no no regrets kind of music, you know, it's just bang. Um, every track is pretty violent, vicious, I think there's actually quite a nice piano track on the end of the album, which is maybe a little odd, but the whole album pretty much is a journey of just incredible riffing and musicianship. Uh, it's got an interesting drum sound on it, but I actually think it works quite well with their theme of kind of this sort of like, it's like they're in a nuclear bunker or something. Um, and the drums, the sort of raw sound of that drum, just I think actually helps with the theme of their music. So some have criticised it, but for me, this album is tremendously impressive. It's not something uh, it's something that needs some appreciation because I think a lot of technical death metal albums are just ignored because they're just too, you know, too technical by and a lot of people don't like that showing off element of technical death metal that there is. But Cytotoxin's album is an example of how to pull it off well with superb production as well. Every part of this album is something to digest and appreciate, so don't miss it. Number three is Silosis, Cycle of Suffering. Um, I'm a bit of a Silosis fan, so this is where bias might have crept into my list a bit. Um, but I don't know, this, 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 it's hardly been talked about this album, but it's, it's, it's really, really good. They've packed so much in to all the songs on this album. Not one track is a filler. It's why it's so high on my list. It's why it's number three. It, it's... Um, it's fantastic. That's all I have to say, really. I think um, the closing track as well leaves you with a feeling of satisfaction because after sort of 11 pretty thrashy in-your-face tracks, you end with this quite beautiful, more melodic track that leaves a lasting effect of an, a bit of an emotional impact as well. Um, so the whole album, another one of these kind of journeys, I suppose, it's, it's um, 45 minutes of an excellent music musical listening experience. Number two is Ulcerate, Stare Into Death and Be Still. Now I have seen this album on a lot of lists um, and it's easy to understand why because um, it's, 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 it's how you do extreme metal and it's how you carry it off and make it beautiful as well at the same time. Uh, two words that you might think extreme metal and three words even extreme metal and beautiful you shouldn't mix, but they can, um, and Ulcerate prove, you, prove to you how to do it best with complex progressions and um, sort of this, this sort of interesting mix of uh, what well, is like death metal elements with, um, with some nice thrown in um, atmospheric moments in, in the tracks as well. Uh, it's like... Um, I guess it's not really like actually anything much I've heard before, which is also why I've put it so high on my list. I, I don't can't think of an album like this in recent memory. Um, and yeah, every, every track leaves you with a feeling of satisfaction. You listen to something really quite powerful, I suppose. Powerful, in fact, is the word I would use for the album as a whole. Um, and that's ulcerates, staring to death and be still. I think the first couple of tracks as well um, on this album particularly are really quite uh, quite stunning. My number one choice for the year is a collaboration. Um, it's appropriate. Sometimes these collaborations work incredibly well and this is one where it's like it was meant to be. It works that well. Emma Ruth Rundle and Thou. Emma Ruth Rundle is known, of course, um, as a sort of a, I'll say, solo artist, but she has a band behind her as well, obviously. She, um, her voice is unique. People compare her to Alanis Morissette, although, yes, I can hear Alanis Morissette there a bit, but 
I think Emma Ruth Rundle is much, has darker feel to her voice, um, which suits kind of this rock, um, the rock genre and the metal genre much more, which is why this marriage between these two artists, her, her band and um, Val, this doom metal band, works so well. It's not like anything I can, can think of I've heard before. And so you've got this interesting mix of this sort of post-rock soulful, soulful um, voice with post-rock and atmosphere and then he really heavy sort of quite extreme metal thrown in as well um, so you get this kind of blending of in elements which maybe shouldn't work but they do and it's quite top of my list because I think it's really original quite besides being a, a really good album as well um, there's a couple of, you know, in fact, every track on this is really good, otherwise it wouldn't be top of my list, but I think the first one and the last one are perhaps my absolute favourites, uh, Killing Floor and The Valley. They are um, sublime, is the word, I guess. So yeah, so that's my top 10 albums. I'm going to finish there. Uh, I hope you uh, all have kind of enjoyed the list or you maybe pick out one or two of these albums to listen to if you haven't heard them before uh, or that uh, you have lists of your own maybe and um, feel free to share those I might check those out so I'm going to sign out here and uh, bid farewell to 2020 as well at some point soon thank goodness